Welcome garden explorers. I want to give you a few signs that we see here in Southern Florida that let us know that it is fall. Unfortunately, you can't feel the difference in the weather, but it's often we have, a, we'll have stormy days and I have some clips of the, of some really serious overcast stormy days, but we don't have those very often. We do have considerably more windy days um, and, but we also have hysterical squirrels who are trying to, to uh, store away food for the winter. I'm not sure why, because things are available all year, but I guess it's just in their genes. But we have migratory birds and different plants blooming. That is one of the most beautiful things that I love about Southern Florida, is that no matter the season of the year, there's always something blooming. Uh, we also have different fruits available because we are a growing state, um, a garden agricultural state. So we have different things growing. I shared with you my octopus bowl of some of the first oranges of the season it's from my garden uh, from Hale Groves, which is about 50 miles north of us here. But in any case, I'm gonna show you a few clips and you can enjoy our fall Florida style. my explorers. When we talk about fall in southern Florida, it is much more subtle than other places, but one of the things that changes for us, and you can tell even from inside the house, is the angle of the sun, uh, the angle of the sunlight coming in, and of course that's part of the seasons. But here, now that we're um, in fall, in late, in late fall, uh, the angle has changed tremendously because this is directly east. <laughs> Sorry about that. Excuse the puppy interruption. She has to protect us, Lola. She has to protect us from everything and nothing. As I was saying, this is directly east, and so during the summer, our sunlight comes from here. And of course, the other thing about it, um, if you've ever been to Southern Florida, in the summer, the heat and the sunlight is really intense. Um, it's, it's not as, I mean, it's bright, very bright, of course, and we have um, windy weather much more often except for storm time in the summer, but um, oh, there's the hummingbird too. We have visitors, migratory birds in the fall. That's a sign of fall for us. And we also, of course, have these windy days, typical of late October, November. It's taking our temperature down to the high 70s, low 80s, which is feels heavenly for us. It's a nice change, but it is subtle, but if you pay attention, you can feel the difference and the air just feels different. It's delightful. The hummingbird is right here. Beautiful. Hi, my garden explorers. So in Southern Florida, our um, signs of fall are much more um, subtle than they are other places. But I just wanna share with you, we've looked at this cassia before. Um, it was when it had the leaves closed at night. And, um, but this is how it looks in the fall. It's late October, the last week of October. Halloween's just a few days away. And it is now almost in complete bloom. And I want to go in closer. It is a very cool flower. Let's take a look at that. Um, it is a butterfly attractor, pollinator attractor. They're hovering bees right now. I don't know if you can see them because it's kind of little. But um, it also is the larval plant for the sulfur butterfly, beautiful yellow butterfly. Uh, they do drink the nectar as well, but they also lay their eggs on these leaves. And um, it's a very beautiful sign of fall that we have here in Southern Florida. Now I have another one down here. You can see it's, it's blooming as well. And the story of these is that when I purchased them, they were um, about seven inches tall 
and now they have turned into beautiful shrubs. Uh, well, I guess they're like small trees, actually. I just caught a sight of the hummingbird. Sorry, I get distracted. Um, but you see, we have another one here. This one has doesn't have quite as many blooms, but they also provide nice spots to um, protect our understory here. But it is a sign of fall when I see the buds coming on these. Then we know that that is this time of year. Okay, this is a stretch, but you see that little hovering, hovering fly, bee, insect. <laughs> Hangs around this cassia and swoops in and drinks some nectar. It's little, so you have to pay attention. See it? And then, and it goes back and hovers some more. It's really beautiful. It's the green, like the green bee, all iridescent and beautiful. It must be drinking because I don't see it hovering. But it's another, another local that loves these cassia blossoms. Which I love just because of their beauty but also because it provides food and shelter for a lot of critters. Oh, there's another honeybee. Honeybee enjoying this. It's so important to have pollinator plants, especially for the bees. As you know, they provide every third bite of food we eat. If it wasn't for bees, we wouldn't have all the delicious fruits and vegetables that we call vegetables that are really a fruit. Remember a fruit? Is a seed packet. So if it has seeds, its purpose um, is to produce more plants. But these pollinators are what make it happen. Thank you all. The honeybee here, I don't want to disturb it. But we can see it enjoying the cassia. Oh, there's another one over here. Sweet little honeybees. You know, all these honeybees we see are the worker bees, and they're all females. You go girls, they're the ones that do all the work. The drones hang out with the queen. You know, there's one queen in a bee colony. One queen, some drones, but thousands and thousands of worker bees. They go out <clears throat> to visit many blossoms per day in order to get enough nectar themselves and the pollen that they collect on their legs. They definitely have a tourist system and we need them. People need them for their, for their life, for their food. If I continue to be unsuccessful capturing the honeybee on video, I do have some um, still sh shots that I can just placed there in the video for you to see. A beautiful, large bumblebee on my, oh, there's the green hovering fly, hovering bee. Look at it, beautiful iridescent, love it. But there's a beaut, I have, I, I will submit some shots of a bumblebee on my eggplant blossom. And you can see the legs just filled with pollen pretty exciting. Okay, I'm trying to catch, oh, there it is. I, I wanted you to see the sulfur butterfly. This is the host, the cassia is the host plant for the sulfur. As you can see, it's really hard to film. <laughs> it splits like crazy. This is our beautiful cassia. Oh, there it is again. Maybe you have caught a glimpse, which is about all we can do. Enjoy. Oh, here's that black bee again. 
over here I'm now on the on the porter wheat. Now the native Florida porter wheat is actually has a white blossom, but this is the one more um, easily accessible. And so that's the one that I have. And actually, it's very easy to propagate. You can cut it, uh, take cuttings, and um, and root them that way. They also have sprouted uh, little baby porter weeds, little seedlings. So I've planted some of those in other spots in the yard. Very busy. Oh, beautiful. It's a large bee. This might be the one they call the carpenter bee, but I'm not sure. I don't really know this species that well. Just know that it is a busy bee and a beauty. Oh, back to the honeybee up here. Oh, they're smaller, so it's hard to see them. Might be it's a little too bright. Back down. I was hoping we could see some honeybees. I may have already mentioned that the, the edible hibiscus blooms in the fall. Also, is another sign of fall in my yard. In case I didn't mention it, now I have. So here are some views of the edible hibiscus that has actually opened. It's a beauty. Now these seeds, once they've um, bloomed, made their little fruit, these seeds are used for hibiscus tea. Let's see if I can pull one down here. Carefully. There it is. And then once it's bloomed, you get these little pods that you can brew to make hibiscus tea. See, this one was bloomed yesterday, and it's busy creating this little pod. Very pretty. The leaves are so pretty. Almost looks like a Japanese maple because of the leaf color and shape. But it is an edible hibiscus. I bought my original plant. It was about four inches tall. And I bought it for a dollar at a um, an Earth Day celebration at Gray Mockingbird Gardens. And now I have it all over the yard because it's another one of those plants that you can cut to propagate. So you see I have it here next to the other hummingbird loving plants. This is another great pollinator plant. Lots of buds. Lots and lots of buds. You can see I even have some more down here. And a little pot of them here. Check this out. All from cuttings. Gotta love it. 